tiny quick note before we start. Uh, new format podcast starting tomorrow, live streaming, linked below. Something that you can join in with, uh, whether that be anonymously via the Slido link that is also down below, or indeed if you want to jump on a Google Meet and be part of the show. Um, I want us to share our experiences and come together as a fellowship, a fellowship of the ring pull, as I'm calling it. So join me tomorrow, seven o'clock BST on this channel. That's Thursday, seven o'clock BST. Really hope you can be there. Links in the video description down below. Welcome to Piano Book. If you missed the last video about Piano Book, our own entity again, starting a new chapter, which will be called Audio Incubator. Got the URL, audioincubator.com, and I hope it gets short to Audio Inc because I enjoyed the double entendre there excuse the French accent, but we need your help twofold. Firstly, we need a band-aid to help finance keeping the thing going until we get finance in. We're going to do that by creating a mega sample library of you just giving us notes. We need a long note and a short note as a minimum, but if you want to give us a bunch of long notes and a bunch of short notes, whether it be different pitches or different instruments, we will certainly make sure you're credited on any promotional material surrounding this. It's, it's not the model of Piano Book, it, we won't survive with this, as I say, band-aid, but it will certainly help us with the early coding stages of what will be a completely new site. Now, talking about financing the project, that's something I want to discuss with you. So we're holding a town hall in London on the 7th of November. There's an event right down below. If you fancy coming, just let us know because then we'll know what size of venue or table to book. Um, if you can't make it, uh, we'll make sure that we live stream it keep it for future reference, but also there'll be ways to interact with us directly, even if you can't make it via stuff like Slido. So, date for the diary, but also if you follow the instructions down below, we'd really ap appreciate your contributions. And, and we will naturally dream up some lovely prizes for those of you with the most inventive submissions and most colourful, imaginative videos to go along with them. All the details in the video description down below. Earth. Even the word sounded strange to me now. Unfamiliar. How long had I been gone? How long had I been back? Did it matter? Sampling for me started when I was remarkably young. I think only myself and Ferris Bueller were sampling at, at that age. <coughs> But it really blossomed uh, with these things. Uh, there's a film called Solaris, Cliff Martinez did the score, he did it with steel pans and, and it was beautiful. And I decided to see if I could create similar effects with just common old kitchenware. Nearly two decades hence, I've developed a rather fanatical view towards how everything sounds and get very distracted when someone pings something. You go, oh, that sounds tasty. But so often I hear something that sounds lovely and I know that it won't sample well. So, I mean, a good example is nice kind of mid-range wine glass. Oh, an interesting sound. Sounds like a wine glass. And then you've got this. And if we were to play that with a beat, and then this. Doesn't take much to get a bit of inspiration. Problem is, I know this one is gonna sample well. Where this one is going to sound rubbish. 
because it's but it's also got a and when you sample stuff with more than one note it's incredible how shit it sounds cheek gloss really beguiling quality to it that's really quite beautiful. Pricey glass, however. I always do the Axel Foley test. Passable. Akpi here, and today I want to welcome you to the walkthrough video of the Woodland Grand Piano. Fuck me, Akpi, this is just so beautiful. And I'm so sorry, my sustain pedal has just, just packed in now, so I've just got it on permanent sustain. It just stands testament to this idea of, I mean, it's beautifully recorded, don't get me wrong, beautifully implemented. The feel of it is gorgeous. But what you've captured is the spirit. And, and, and that's the key here. It's that selection of microphones. It's the way that you've placed them. It's the way that you've played the samples and the way that you've implemented them, which isn't like a textbook. Uh, it's so clear to hear that. It's not a textbook book example of sampling. It is you responding to the instrument itself. And, but also having an artistic vision for what the end product should sound like. And it, it's so clear. It's linked in the video description down below. Uh, it says demo. I don't quite know how that works. I presume that there's a paid for version. Uh, if you go to the product page on Piano Book, I'm sure all will be explained. So I kicked this the other day. Because we've got three dogs, because I'm a weak-willed father, we have a massive water bowl for them. Oh, I just, it just sounds great, but I can hear it a number of harmonics in there, see if I can sing them. Ooh, ooh. Ah. Right, let's hear it doggy style. That came out wrong. It sounds like, like a diegetic bit of source music rustled up by a composer for a science fiction film in the 1970s. Now we could theoretically duck that out. And still hear it. But with noise reduction technology, what you can do is, is actually identify harmonics and muck around with them. So I thought in order to be able to make that interesting sounding doggy bowl into a, an instrument that can actually play Axel F, what would it be like to deconstruct it harmonically and then reconstruct it with control over those upper harmonics and weird notes, bring them into line somehow? Do you ever get the feeling that you've taking yourself down a rabbit hole and there's no rabbit at the end of it to pull out of the hat, mixing a metaphor there. So what we've got here is the doggy bowl with the harmonic separated out, tuned and spread across the keyboard. And then we've got our transients. So the transients sound like this. and these weird, signy tones, but they still have that character of, of the bowl, slightly unstable, 
um, harmonics. So together, they sound like this. Which isn't, isn't great, but thinking about it, the harmonics that have now been separated, deconstructed and reconstructed are now spreading the load, which basically means the transient are very loud. So let's try putting the harmonics up by 12, take the transients down by 12. Still sounds queer, so I'm just going to try one last thing, and that is to take these harmonics one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to duplicate that five times, basically, spread them all across. It's lovely the way it blinks like that. Uh, across the keyboard so that the load is no longer spread, but layered to hopefully give us a more accurate reconstruction, albeit harmonically reconstructed. This is really genuinely the first time I've ever done this, so it, I do not know what the outcome will be. Will the rabbit appear? at the bottom of this hole. We are sans rabbit. Cult stuff, I think, is is underselling because these things are extraordinary. Just stunning. And again, instant inspiration there. Um, beautifully implemented. Love the GUI. And thanks so much for your contribution. All of these linked in the video description down below. So my idea is, instead of taking something incredibly complex, where you've got maybe two or three harmonics, lots of different stuff going on, what about something where there are two very present harmonics, what if we were to deconstruct it just into two constituent parts? So, same drill as before. I'm first going to remove the ambient noise uh, with the spectral denoiser. And then I'm just going to identify this one frequency and I'm going to give it a bit of fat around it, so there really is no hint of that frequency whatsoever. Isolate that, export it, and then export the rest of the recording with just the transients and the harmonic intact. So, we've got the fancy glass. So that's with the other harmonic removed. I'm excited about this because that, to me, bears the characteristic of the glass, the beauty of it. Um, and then we've got the harmonic. And again, because we've given it a bit of fat, it doesn't have that, dare I say it, isotopy sound. So lovely. 
Now what I'm gonna do is tune this harmonic into that so we don't lose the, the, the body of the instrument. So the root, Axel F. But by not taking out all of the curious harmonics, I think that we're not losing the character. And then we have our upper harmonic. Again, doesn't have that isotopy quality because I've given it a little bit of fat, not just taken out the pure wave. So, together, absolutely beautiful. The rabbit doth appear and it's time to apply Dr. Splosh. I won't say that again. Splosh is fine, the doctor not. Let's roll off the bottom end. And the ubiquitous stereo delay. Because we've deconstructed it, I guess we can do interesting things with the different elements. So let's take the upper harmonic out of that one. One of them. I love this so much. I've only got it on EXS at the moment. I will try and get it back up on Piano Book. I haven't done Piano Book for a while, so uh, bear with me. I'll try and get it into contact and a decent sampler. But I'm just going to go and raid my kitchen for all of those things that I thought I couldn't sample because they had more than one note. Hmm. Now that's what I call a GUI. the cue is done. It's just brilliant. I mean, 
sampled well and stuff, but to be able to provide people with an environment like that where it's like insta cue and you can imagine wah underneath. I don't know if you intended for it to be as filthy as that, but I certainly am enjoying it. So thanks as always for the submissions, some really beautiful stuff there. Also some great demos that we've been crediting in the screen down below. Um, all I can say is Piano Book is moving forward. We're building a new site from Code Up. We've got a blog up on audioincubator.com, uh, which we haven't updated recently, but we will be revealing there first the new logo for Audio Incubator or Audio Inc as I prefer to refer to it. But what I will do is immediately tonight is put this up on a thing called The Hub on the Crow Hill site, thecrowhillcompany.com. The Hub is a place where I can just bung stuff and you can grab it. And there's all sorts of exciting stuff in there alongside collaborations. Talking of which, it would be so fantastic if you could contribute to this mega sample library. So I need longs and shorts. So probably what I'll do with this sound is some shorts. And then some longs, I'll do just a very slow, unmeasured tremolandi or just repeated notes, but just slow and at, you know, not at a tempo, just aleatoric, I think the word is. Everyone who contributes will get a credit um, for their contributions um, when we promote uh, this and it's going to a good cause. It's enabling us to take Piano Book onto its next chapter, which is Audio Incubator, Audio Inc. And I'm really hoping you can join us down in London on the 7th of November for a town hall to talk about its future and uh, how we see it panning out, how we see it being financed. Uh, there's a Eventbrite down below, so we don't know if it's gonna be a table in a pub somewhere, or indeed somewhere a bit larger to accommodate everyone. So we would like an idea of, of, of numbers who are gonna turn up. And what we will do is try and work out how to stream it live as well. So if you can't make it down, over, across, or under, to London, uh, then you'll be part of the story as well. We'll do a Slido so you can uh, put your questions up, this, that and the other. Anyway, I'm really looking forward to that. And anyone who just wants to come along, there'll be members of the Crow Hill crew there uh, who you can meet. They're just coming back from an amazing trip to Las Vegas and I'm sure would love to meet you too. So uh, put it in your diary. Thanks for watching to the end and uh, loads of love.